Hi, it's Andrea Fouts. It's the 5th of February 2017. As many of you know, um, I do past life regression, inner child therapy, ancestral timeline healing. Ooh, I think the camera moved. <laughs> Ooh. And uh, I do time travel. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so I do inner journey work, emotional inner journey work, past life regression, inner child therapy, ancestral timeline healing, spirit releasement, I read the emotional Kashik records, and I speak light language. And today, <laughs> uh, I was having lunch with a friend today, and, you know, I try to understand where other spiritual perspectives come from, because often you know looking at where we are energetically now on the planet i just see so much nonsense in spirituality you know and i was trying to understand the perspective of a lot of people who are teaching it there's these enormously you know overweight predominantly male sort of um I'm going to call them out, Muji's, Sayababa, Osho, kind of, that kind of genre of teaching, you know, and the female version is maybe Amma or, or, or that, but Amma tends not to speak, it's just hugging, and you know, I met Mother Mira myself, which is the lady who does the eye gazing, and then you have a male equivalent of the eye gazing, which is Brazzo, and um, you know, it's baby basic stuff. You know, these people aren't taking you inside yourself to heal your ailments and illnesses. And a lot of those teachers are not in the greatest physical vessel themselves, you know. And they teach you to ignore the physical body. And I was trying to explain to my friend today, sort of, she doesn't really know what I do in the perspective of what I do. So, I was trying to understand um, limiting spiritual perspectives that actually don't help you evolve, are probably outdated and outmoded for the ascension process of humanity now. It kind of constantly teaches you to bat away negative thoughts, which kind of is limiting, you know, because you're constantly then going to be bringing stuff up. Whereas when you do emotional inner journey work, like going into your emotional Akashic records, which is going into your other timelines, other versions of you. You know, I've been doing this work 16 years in over probably 22,000 hours with people. And, you know, once you clear it out, that particular issue is gone forever. And then you have a better way of dealing with other things in life. So for example, you know, you're looking for the source of your emotional issue, whatever's playing out now, and it possibly is not just in a past life, it might be linked to two or three past lives, it might just be linked to one. It might be compounded, that means recreated in this lifetime by the, the backlog of the past life, but it's being recreated in this lifetime by the inner child reacting to that. And the inner child, when you're a child, is reacting from either the fact that you didn't stay in your light body for the first seven years of your life. So if you know what happens when you don't stay in your light body for the first seven years of your life means that you take on ancestral karma. So we're not in this energy body. So what we do when we don't stay in that, when our birthing process, when our early parenting process doesn't make us feel to stay in our own energy body, we attach to the nearest energy body, which is predominantly your mother or your father if you're not adopted. You know, so then you bond with that energy body and then you are taking on the ancestral karma of the energy body of your primary carers. That doesn't have to be, we don't really have to take the ancestral karma on so much. Um, you know, we're told, oh, it's a DNA transference. It's not, it's an energy field transference. Yes, you take on emotion in the womb if you don't detach from 
your mother's emotions. You know, a lot of the time I take people back to being in the womb and they've taken on their mother's emotions as if they're their emotions. So we have to go through the process of detaching from the mother's emotions and your emotions in the womb. And then that's a process doing that through all the fragmented parts of your inner child from every point where your soul fragmented off because the experience was traumatic to you as a child. But those parts of you are still reacting as an adult and they need bringing back into being part of the authentic you. We have to also look at the past lives to make sure they're genuinely your past lives and we have to clear the emotion from the past lives. It's not about the fancy of seeing the past lives. Yes, that was what I did on TV back in the day when I did this morning and then I did two series of a show called If I've Been Here Before, which if you haven't seen those videos, you know, that some of them, not all of them, some of them are on YouTube and you can Google, Google past life regression and my name or Google past life regression in this morning or Google have I been here before and you'll probably pull up a lot of the regressions. Um, they're not that well edited in, in to look like I'm being soft and caring as I bring people out of the regression, which I am in reality. Um, that's just how they were edited and that's some of how I was vocally speaking back in 2004. That brings me on to another thing as well, entities. You know, you can have entities attached to these. These are fragmented aspects of other people's soul or interdimensional entities or galactic entities. You know, I've made videos about egos and entities, so look up the video about egos and entities. Now, when you see me doing the series of Have I Been Here Before, you will notice my voice go very, very high pitch. Not when I was doing this morning, but when I was doing certainly the first series of Have I Been Here Before, um, mainly the first series. The second series was edited, in my opinion, very badly. Um, but the first series, you will see that my voice goes very high bit pitched. Now, that was due to the location where we were filming it. A lot of the ce celebrities were actually you know what psychometry is, you know, where you hold inanimate objects, jewelry or whatever, they were picking up, um, psychometrizing the building that we were doing the regressions in. So they were picking up what was going on in other timelines in that building and some not, not great things had happened in other timelines in that building and they were picking that up. There were, at that time, a lot of interdimensional entities in that building trying to stop me doing what I was doing. I'd also been been mugged and strangled before that in my life. So I had a few holes in my energy field and my throat chakra and they could come in and they were affecting my vocal cords. Now that wouldn't happen because, you know, you may have heard me say in other videos, I healed my throat chakra issues. You know, I was on thyroxine for 16 years after being mugged and strangled. Um, I think that was an attack upon me by interdimensional beings to try to stop me from doing what I was trying to do in this incarnation. Um, so these things happen on those levels, but you can heal yourself. You know, I got myself off thyroxine after being on it for 16 years. I've cleared that. I've healed my energy field of my throat chakra, and I should have all the octaves within that throat chakra, which helps me when I speak light language activations and codes, which you can see in other videos, because light language is activating the dormant DNA that got shut down through all kinds of galactic timelines, um, the hybridization of humans and other ET races trying to merge with other T ET races, shut the DNA down. And um, we've all got compromised DNA, you know, uh, and we're all awakening our DNA now. And then also the Shulman resonance frequency, which I've talked about a lot before. And I think there's a couple of videos just come out and people are posting on Facebook at the moment because the Shulman resonant frequency of the planet used to be 7.8 cycles per second. It's really not been that for ages now and it fluctuates. I mean, I heard somebody saying it gone up to 36. Um, I doubt it stayed at 36 very much. I heard people saying it's around 13 to 16 hertz um, and that affects humans. So 
if you're not in vibrational frequency, and it takes time for a human to come into frequency with the Schulman resonant frequency of the planet, but it's going to give you heart attacks, it's going to give you strokes if you're not in, in alignment with that frequency, um, it's going to give you anxiety attacks, because you have to stabilize your vibrational frequency to merge with the frequency of the new earth and this is everything we've been talking about this is the ascension process you will not be able to stay in your physical body with the old paradigm spiritual teachings um because if you look at those old paradigm spiritual teachers, they're not in great health, shape or well-being themselves because they ignore the physical body. They're not about the physical body. They're about dying, reincarnate and get a new physical body. Even though I do pass life regression, okay, I'm saying we're not meant to die and reincarnate as many times as we have been doing. We were meant to have stayed in our physical bodies in a higher vibrational state than we have been doing. And we were meant to be able to get out of the die and reincarnate cycle on this planet. And not many people have been able to do that because their frequency has been too low. You are activating your light bodies now. You're integrating outwardly and inwardly your higher self but you have to clear your akashic records out to do that you have to heal your wounded inner child you have to heal your ancestral timelines and you know this is why i'm a little bit harsh on all these hand wafting therapies because i don't even think i would be wafting my hands over many people because um it wouldn't be loving to me my frequency is high enough that on average, most people I would be wafting my hands over would maybe increase their vibration. But if somebody had a vibration higher than me and I wafted my hands over them, I would take their frequency down. Same with sex. You know, I was saying this to a friend today. I said, you take on the vibration of the people you have sex with. And if your vibration is a similar level to the person you're having sex with, then you won't notice much of a difference. And especially if there's sperm transference or... You know, if the lady's menstruating, you are more going to merge your energy fields during those times. And whoever has the higher frequency will either pull the other person up, um, but at the same time of pulling them up, you, you're going to take on their energy field and that can affect your DNA. You know, you're going to take on, on whatever's in their energy body. And that might not be loving towards yourself. So we have to be so discerning about these things. You know, um, you know, we live in a lustful period where pornography has sort of had its way with people. And that's just interdimensional dark entities activating sacral chakras, which make people lustful. But it's not coming from the heart. It's not coming from love. And, you know, it's not coming from somebody you're getting to know and know, you know, is my personality similar to theirs? You know, could we actually communicate well together and could we live in a house together and could we co-create together? Um, we don't find that out. We just go with raw, physically, I like the chocolate box. Um, and then we're like, oh, I like having sex with them. But can we actually communicate, you know, our, our interests in life, how we live, our, our household habits our personal habits is that able to merge together is this person emotionally intelligent enough compared to my emotional intelligence and so it highlights all these issues and then we see people you know writing about narcissism now and you know we're rife with oh my god narcissism you know but the only way you're going to really rise above attracting narcissism and observe it for what it is, and all cluster B issues, borderline personality, psychopaths, sociopaths, histronic history, all that stuff, you have to have to get to a place of indifference with the person who has it, you know, you can observe it, um, and, it and it's not about judging people, it's about observing it and going, they have issues, okay, I'm done, you know, but I am not emotionally engaged in their energy field. Um, you have to truly find a place of indifference with it. And I think when you've dated or 
had parents who are on that spectrum of personality disorders, you, because you haven't healed your inner child, you can't actually see it in your parents, so then you have to date people with it to finally heal the inner child in yourself. And then you get to a point where you're okay, now I'm healing my inner child and there's many, many layers because it's an onion and I'm looking at my soul lineage, which is your past life lineage, and then you're looking at your inner child lineage, and then we're, you know, awakening to our soul star lineage of who we've been, where we've been in other timelines, have we been engaged in galactic wars, you know, there are so many things to look at. And then instead of reliving past lives and going back into the ways that we had in those past lives, which were maybe dysfunctional, you know, we're clearing Mayan times, Egyptian times, uh, you know, Victorian times, which isn't that long ago, you know, Mesopotamian times, we're, we're clearing all these timelines, biblical times, which only 2000 years ago, so many people are stuck on on those teachings and misaligned teachings and um, calling on interdimensional entities of dubious nature instead of calling on your higher self. Call on your higher self. What is the matter with calling on your higher self? Why can you not be your own guru? You know, um, I know it's difficult for people. It seems to be difficult to give up this deity worship, you know, have a, I have a statue behind me, but I use it as a depiction of myself. I don't use it as I'm giving my power away to some Buddha statue or, you know, some Kuan Yin statue or whatever it is. It's like, I'm not giving my power away to those things. You can have them, but if you have an emotional attachment to what those statues mean, you're probably not going to be able to heal your illness and ailment that easily. You have to go into healing yourself. There are people with skills and gifts like myself who can read the emotional Akashic records. I can do that stuff over Skype. It's very easy for me to do it. In person, I can regress you if that is something you think is easier for you or if you find it difficult to drop into your emotional self. That's an easier way to do it. Um, but we have to clear all this stuff. You can heal any organ in your body. You know, you don't need to be cut open and taking medication because every time you manifest an ailment or an illness in your body, it's just showing you you are out of alignment with who you truly are. And the frequencies on the planet are highlighting that in super quick time now. So you need to come into alignment with this. Um, I've talked about this in lots of other videos, um, but people seem to have an issue with investing in deep emotional inner journey work. They're happy to lay there and let people who they're not very discerning about, who don't look in great health and well-being themselves, waft their hands over them. Do not do that. Really be more discerning because they're maybe going to put more stuff in you than take stuff out. And nobody can take out what you need to understand on a soul level unless they have a very high vibration and also if you're doing that hand wafting work with people you know how is that going to help your health and well-being because unless you know how to clear it completely most of you who do that work after you know a few years of doing it don't look in the greatest health shape and well-being yourselves so you know take on board some of what i'm saying uh, I was in I was in Maui the other week and uh, I had an amazing time in Maui at the Lemurian temples, new energy open there, very high vibration. I was asleep for nearly the whole of last week since I came back because I was only there eight, eight days and I went through so many different time zones on the way there. And I've been in Fintorn in Scotland as well, which was really amazing vibrations there. And I feel guided to go to the Isle of Iona. Um, which is also in Scotland, and I think is linked to Lemuria, and uh, some other places I feel drawn to, and I was in Madeira, if you didn't see me since I went to Madeira, so these are all volcanic islands that have high vibrational energies there, some of them are stuck, some of them are opening up, amazing things are happening on the planet, but you have to go inside yourselves, there's no shortcut to this, you 
have to face your emotional self, past life, this life, ancestral. This kind of old paradigm spirituality, which is observe a thought and just bat it away, is, is not going to help. So um, take on board what I'm saying. Um, please apply it to yourselves because it's going to pay dividends. It's just false economy not, not to go inside yourselves. It really is so worth it. Yes, you may cry and sob. You may face things you never emotionally imagined. You need to make some space in your life to go inside yourself to, to do that, to, to honour what you need. Um, and don't self-sabotage. This is not a time for self-sabotage. You've been through so many incarnations, so many lifetimes, so many timelines to be here right now. And the reason you're here is to do this inner journey work. Um, you're not really here for all the other stuff. You can do the other stuff and the other stuff will come towards you if you really work on your soul, really work on you can heal anything in your body. Everything that's come at me, I've healed naturally within myself, you know, and I know that it's possible for all of us. You know, you've been told so many lies about your potential, about your DNA and about who you truly are. And you really are waking up now and you really need to trust what you're intuitively guided to or become aware of yourself, become aware of your own sabotage and what you put importance to. And you have to forgive yourselves you have to forgive, you have to go within, you have to find the guilt and the shame, and you have to process it and let it go. And that's what people like myself are here for, to assist you. So um, do subscribe to my other videos <laughs> and uh, just breathe in. I'm gonna not speak highlight language too much. I'm just gonna bring in a transmission of light language. I have other light language clips and in the next few months I am gonna be offering to download um, light language codes on from my website okay so much love for now um, many blessings and just close your eyes take a deep breath and breathe in these light language codes um, from Maui Lemurian energies and the Findhorn energies so <laughs> Amokuya kiana hai amokuya he mokuya kiana he amakaya hai ahu e mokuya kimakaya kiana hamohu I o mokuya kiana mokukuya, i ana ana na makiana kama kukuya, i mokosa kama kuya. in your own time and open your eyes and being fully grounded and fully dimensioned much love many blessings and uh, thank you for listening andrea thanks thank you